Johnny Barstow rushed England to a significant one-day international series victory over New Zealand with a stunning century, his second in consecutive games, off just 58 balls here at Hadley Park. Barstow, cashing in on his first extended run in the 50-over side, followed up his 138 in a losing cause at Dunedin to hurry England past New Zealand's wholly inadequate 223 with fully 17.2 overs to spare. Fittingly, Ben Stokes hit a six with the scores level in the city where he was born and his parents still live. It was all too easy for England in front of a full house at this wonderful ground after they had produced another excellent performance in the field to leave New Zealand 70 or 80 runs short of a competitive total. Then Barstow emphasised just how substandard New Zealand's batting had been on a blameless pitch by hitting 104 before. He hit his own wicket trying to smash Trent Bolt through the offside for yet another boundary. It was the third fastest century in England's one-day history and the fastest by an opener who is truly now established as one of England's very best batsmen with both red and white balls. Barstow was assisted by an unexpected partner in Alex Hales who had looked set for an extended spell on the sidelines for England but who stepped in at the last minute when Jason Roy suffered a back spasm. Hales took his chance in a supporting role to Barstow to hit 61 before he became the second England wicket to fall. Slog sweeping Mitchell Santner to Kane Williamson at mid-wicket. No matter. This was billed as a perfect final for England to get used to the pressures of a knockout match ahead of the all-important World Cup next year so it was a test they passed with flying colours against a top one-day side. There was very little seam movement in an excellent Hagley Park pitch but New Zealand found the going tough from the start. In the face of another excellent new ball spell from Chris Wokes in particular, once Colin Munro had been dismissed by the third ball of the match and Mark Wood had forced the Dangerman and Williamson to play on New Zealand were very much up against it particularly without the injured Ross Taylor, but it was the introduction of spin that really turned this decider in England's favour as Adil Rashid and Moeen Ali had just as big an impact here as they did in England's last win in Wellington. The great friends bowled in tandem and took four wickets between them. Moeen producing an absolute beauty to bowl Taylor's replacement in Mark Chapman and Rashid claiming three key victims. It looked as though New Zealand would not be able to use up all their overs until they finally found some solidity in the form of a stand of 84 between Henry Nichols and their unlikely batting star of this series in Santner. Santner had made his first one-day international half-century in Wellington, where he was unluckily and crucially run out backing up and now he made his second before Chris Wilkes became the first bowler to dismiss him this series. The left-arm spinner had taken his series average to 108 with his 67 here before Hales, not always the strongest fielder, pulled off an outstanding catch on the boundary to hurry New Zealand's demise. Better was to come when Barstow pulled off an absolutely stunning one-handed diving grab on the boundary to send back to him. Southie and give Wilkes his third wicket as New Zealand were bowled out with one ball wasted. It was another outstanding fielding effort from England spoilt only by two late drops. Moeen inexplicably allowing Santner to escape his grasp and Joe Root dropping Ish Sodi in the final over only when he slipped in the outfield. They will be delighted with a 3-2 victory to add to their 4-1 thrashing of Australia which leaves their 50-over cricket in pretty rude health as they now prepare for two tests to complete their longest winter.